Alright. Uh, this is gonna be short. I, uh, I spent, like, probably too much time, uh, talking to my father on Father's Day. Uh, and, uh, then I spent some time with my sister. Uh, there, there's, there's stuff I did. Um, but that stuff is now done, and, uh, I have spent the last, uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, waiting for housemate to get out of the restroom with his fucking music playing. So, now that that's done, uh, and I might not get copyright struck, um, the general vibe today is Father's Day. Um, and, and, and I wanna, I, like, I feel like this is probably one of the places where some of the anarchist crowd disagrees with me, but... I feel like men are given the greatest shaft by the state, the greatest shaft by society, and the system at large. Um, and I think Father's Day is a good day to remember that. Um, I wrote this thing that I still stand by. So, if you want the, that information, that will be uh, in a link. But generally speaking... Um, <laughs> The, 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 the image goes, male disposability primer. Men are more likely raped than women, more likely murdered, more likely to commit suicide, more likely to die in the workplace, forced to sign up for selective service in the U.S., more likely to be injured in the workplace, generally employed into more dangerous jobs, Comparatively likely to die from diseases like cancer, but less supported by charity and society. More likely to be domestically abused. Demonized in society by stupid men and men are pigs stereotypes. More likely to be homeless. Less likely to receive sex-specific abuse treatment and facilitation. More likely to have issues overlooked. He's a man. He can take it. Demonized for physical defense against opposite sex still last in line for life saving quote women and children first and the hashtag I used was rethink male privilege now this has gotten me some flack over the years I posted this like fucking five years ago and I stand by it um, and, and people ask me for sources and then don't believe the sources I throw their way. Um, they, they're very interested in, um, in why I'm, I'm willing to make all these points. And then I tell them, well, because of all of these things, men occupy prisons more. Um, men are disproportionately targeted by the police. Now, what does this do? There's... A lot of racism out there and I think one of the key pieces of racism is the idea that black fatherhood is at risk because of some moral failing in the black fabric I don't think so <laughs> and one of the things that I think contributes greatly to this might be the fact that a lot of them are thrown in prison now what does this do this means that even if you can get enough of you, yourself together and your life together in this, you know, corporate hellscape uh, to get together your black family, uh, you're still going to very likely uh, encounter police in some negative way, or you're going to uh, be enough at risk that it puts you on edge. And what happens when that happens? Well, you're split off from your family. Um, the courts almost always favor women. And it's not just them either. It's just it's an interesting way to counter a form of bigotry to say that, you know, maybe the, the black family would have less problems if it was less targeted by the state and less constantly split by them. Um, but it's with everyone, too. Like, it's like that Body Count song, you know, No Lives Matter, where he's, he's like, when it comes to the poor, no lives matter. Because basically it's a class issue that's always boiled down to a race issue uh, unnecessarily and divisively. So, like, and that's not to say that he doesn't support the message of Black Lives Matter. He's just saying 
that until we take down the system itself, the system that upholds these terrible policies, uh, it's not actually going to change. So the reason I'm bringing all this up is because fathers are stripped of their custody a lot. Um, and like families are split up. And why? Well, because it destabilizes them enough that the government can raise generations of people who were stuck in government facilities called schools, uh, paid daycare, etc. Because they don't, didn't have any other fucking options. Um, and these kids that are raised in fatherless houses have significantly higher rates of crime, uh, mental illness, and a host of other things. So, um, that creates a significant amount of crime in society. A significant amount of social ills stem at least partially, not necessarily fully, but at least partially from fatherlessness. Um, and this lack of a strong central mo role model, role model, role model, wants people to, like, devolve in this way. It wants people to become sheep. It wants people to become passive cattle for the state because when you do that, when you take away somebody's strong male role model um, and relegate them to uh, a single parent, oftentimes, not all the time, uh, that results in worse circumstances than they would have been in otherwise. Um, and, and also oftentimes, there wasn't even any sort of like, you know, way for the guy to defend himself in any sort of meaningful sense. Now, in general, this leads to uh, social malady. It leads to um, a huge amount of people that are just ready to, to, to be thrown into prison, that are just ready to break the wrong laws, that are too weak to defend themselves from police from the system, from everything. The back-breaking labor of raising a next generation of rebels is at least a two-parent job, if not a full-on intergenerational family living situation job like there were before. But this doesn't happen. Uh, and if you watch documentaries like The Red Pill with Cassie J, uh, you'll find that there's a lot to the MRA movement, which is why they always get the shaft. They like things that divide us. They like people like Big Red, Chanty Morris, who just tell people to shut the fuck up and don't actually bring any substance. Um, they like people who disrupt meetings where people are just trying to discuss how best to live as men. They like that. And the reason the state likes that is because they get to get away with so much more of their malady. They get to destroy homes, lives, neighborhoods, societies, and then they get to ordo abkeo their way back into power whenever power is threatened by these mechanisms and more. Um, and the reason I want to bring this all up is because I feel like fathers get the shaft uh, in enough situations that they don't feel like they can say anything. We're told Basically, whenever we have any sort as men of situations like this, we're just supposed to shut the fuck up. Uh, we're just supposed to take it. We're supposed to be men about it. Um, and we're also supposed to not be too manly men about it. Otherwise, we're toxically masculine. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a Kafka trap. That, that, that's, that's what modern masculinity is. It's a Kafka trap. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, and there's no way out. And the justification for this? The patriarchy. Well, exactly what patriarchy would cause a system that is this bad for patras? Like, men have so many bad things happen to them so regularly, and we're, like, not given the same sort of social protections that women are. How is this system at all patriarchal? Well, I've been told so many times that it's patriarchal because uh, men created this system, and of course they're going to use men as their primary workforce. Of course they're going to abuse men 
because it's all based on the idea that if you're the top man, you can get all these other men to do what you want them to. Um, but that's bullshit, especially since historically, um, women have also been rulers. Women have also been at the top of the stack. Um, and even in those societies, it still relatively often came out the same way. Um, and not just that, you know? The fact is that if men rule other men in this way, if men are oppressed because of men, then it's not a patriarchy. It's just archy. And when you start to realize that it's never been about how men are, you know, in control of everything and evil and they should sit down so that women can stand up, all these sorts of things, um, when you start to realize that those are unnecessarily divisive lines, you start to realize that that sort of rhetoric is what creates the fertile soil for these men to have their lives destroyed in the first place. And, like, that's really fucking bad. So if you're setting the rhetorical soil for, like, the oppression of a huge class of people you've never met, maybe you should be the one to reconsider. Maybe you should take a step back. And, and maybe you should strongly reconsider your positions, especially if you claim to be an anti-racist or an anti-bigot or an anti-any sort of bad thing. Because how can you claim to oppose the system uh, when you support it, when it benefits you. I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten into arguments with, with, like, feminists over this. And they don't like to hear that, like, you know, um, it's never been an issue of whether or not women should vote. Nobody should vote. And And maybe feminists shouldn't have been some of the first people putting little flowers into men's pockets and shit when they wouldn't raise their guns for the state. Um, maybe feminists shouldn't have been smashing men's saloons um, because they didn't like that they were drinking. You know, maybe uh, the general notion of, like, first and second wave feminism was also kind of bad. Um, and maybe part of the reason men have it so bad is because we're not allowed to say how bad we have it because the whole, like, feminist ideal these days is to say that men don't have it bad because men are the ones who make it bad. Um, and th then you get b you basically get to, like, neg everything that men think. You basically get to say that because some men are in power, all men are the power structure. And you get to ignore our complaints, you get to ignore our feelings, you get to ignore our legitimate uh, rights offenses and you get to trample on our expression of all of them because that's how modern society works. So I wanted to bring all this up uh, because it's Father's Day. And on Father's Day, a lot of fathers are reminded of the kids they can't see, of the women who misused the court system so that they couldn't see them, or the uh the, the the general upbringing that they had in their in their in their households right i i'm not saying this is all cases you know i'm not remotely saying that what i am going to say is that it's enough that it's a problem and i see a lot of posts on social media today saying men you're valid your fathers you're valid you're 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 vital you're essential we need you we love you but social media is going to go right back to t uh, talking shit about men in, in like, two days, tops, if they're not already doing it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, at the end of the day, a bunch of, you know, harpy cunts are in the trends uh, talking about how evil men are and how maybe if men were better, they would be more fathers. You know, but that it disacknowledges the entire systemic injustice that that, like, creates the fatherlessness problem to begin with. Um, and yeah, there are some scumbag dads out there. I'm not saying there aren't. There are some scumbag men out there who shouldn't be dads and shouldn't be dads even if they are dads, <laughs> you know? Um, but I'm not... Uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that the one-size-fits-all patriarchy excuse for all of these maladies is totally bullshit. You know... When I bring up that men are more likely raped than women, uh, people say, oh, but that's by men. Um, 
maybe. Or maybe you're just highlighting prison cases and uh, uh, other edge cases because you don't want to acknowledge the sheer amount of times that a school teacher uh, or somebody that, that, that a kid is supposed to trust has fucked them. Um, and, and everybody was just like celebrating, like, high five, dude, man, yeah, I'm glad. I would want that. Everyone would want that. What are you complaining about? Why are you gay? Something like that. You've heard it. I know you've heard it. And if you haven't heard it, it's so easy to find. You know, when I bring up that they're more likely murdered, people are like, duh, but that's by men. Uh, yeah, but sure, maybe men would be less likely to do that if the structure of society was less geared toward attacking them. More likely to commit suicide. Same. Uh, they're, they're, they're like, oh, but more women attempt it. Yeah, okay, that doesn't actually say anything, and the, and the numbers aren't actually, like, that dramatically different. And if men are more successful, then that means that there are less men and more men who wanted it badly enough to succeed. That means that men are, like, if you correlate suicide with, like, uh, how bad society makes it for men, uh, that means that men are, have have a worse place in society. Like... <laughs> They're more likely to die in the workplace. Women want equal pay, but they don't want to work as much. They're, they're, they're forced to sign up for selective... Well, or as hard or as dangerously. Uh, they're forced to sign up for selective service in the U.S. Nobody should be. But men are. Uh, and women aren't. Uh, they're generally employed into more dangerous jobs. They're comparatively likely to die from diseases like cancer, but less supported by charity and society. This is true. Just look at the sheer fucking amount of money that goes to breast cancer charity um, and, and like, uh, ovarian cancer charity, and then compare that to the amount of money that's spent on testicular cancer and prostate cancer and shit like that. Men get every bit of the shaft in these regards. Um, they're more likely to be domestically abused. This is true. Women hit their partners and it's supposed to be played off for laughs. And most of the time, men don't even say anything because they don't want to come off like a bitch or they think the court system won't even hear them out. And oftentimes, it fucking doesn't. Um, <laughs> and I have sources, again, for all of these. Demonized in society by stupid men and men are pig stereotypes. Imagine if every time you turned on the TV, woman, like watching this, whoever you are, you immediately saw something that said women are stupid or that had a dumb woman in a commercial or that had a dumb woman in a sitcom or a TV show or something or that had just absolutely every single time you, you, you saw uh, a woman, it was okay that they were just doing everything wrong. Uh, you would probably start to blame the patriarchy, wouldn't you? So why can't we blame something other than the patriarchy for the fact that our media representation is shit? You want to talk about sexualization? Why don't we talk about moronification? Can we do that? No? Okay. Um, and <laughs> more likely to be homeless. This is obvious. This is just true. Um, and people don't even acknowledge this in the privilege spectrum. Usually... Uh, when, when I've seen this brought up as a counterpoint, the immediate next counterpoint is like, oh, but <laughs> they still have privilege. They still have privilege as men, uh, especially if they, they have like the double whammy of white men, etc. They still have the privilege. Well, where? What's the privilege in being homeless? At that point, you basically have nothing. Um, but these people don't want to admit that. They don't want to encounter that. They're less likely to receive sex-specific abuse treatment and facilitation. Uh, men's shelters, men's only shelters, have been shut down after the, the owner was, like, lambasted fucking everywhere. Um, <laughs> and, and this is, like, the, the vast majority of shelters. You can find shelters where you can go if you're a man or a woman, but you can hardly ever find a specific shelter if you're just a man. Um, th there's so many shelters for women and so few shelters for men. We're not allowed to have spaces to recover from abuse. We're not allowed to talk to each other about this too much. We're not allowed to, like, look each other in the eye and say that, yes, I was abused by a woman. And, and like, <laughs> the rest of, like, 
more issue, more likely to have issues overlooked. He's a man he can take it is relatively obvious. Demonized for physical defense uh, against opposite sex. This is relatively obvious. This still lasts in line for life saving. Uh, women and children first. I have sources for all of this. Again, all I'm saying is, like, maybe the situation for fathers is kind of fucking dire. And maybe the situation for men prevents them from even wanting to hook up to begin with or be a father or anything. Maybe the, the MGTOW thing is the result of a systemic mistreatment of men and the commodification of men as only labor tools and as only tools that are useful as long as they support the capital structure and that's it. Um, maybe the solution isn't to call MRAs a bunch of right-wing nuts and dismiss and demonize them. And maybe the solution isn't to continue this systemic abuse of men and fathers. Maybe we could turn it around and society would be better off. But you know, who am I? Again, I'm just some dumb fucking long hair with a beard and fucking dandruff. So, you know, fine. If you want to ignore everything I just said, at least treat the men in your life better. At least do that. Because things could be so much better if we just made better decisions personally. And men, if you realize that you're doing something wrong to women, treat them better too. I'm not saying this is a one-way street. All I'm saying is try to fucking drive. Anyway, uh, if you like this, this was a shorter one. Feel free to like and subscribe and etc, etc, etc. Um, happy Father's Day to all you peaceful parenting fathers and to the fathers who make other people the same way you were, rethink. And to the women who make their lives exactly the same, change. Happy Father's Day. Smash the stick.